So, hi everyone to today's uh, last talk about uh, what the GC team has uh, been doing uh, since GTK9. My name is Thomas Schatzel, I'm from the Orbital Java Hotspot uh, Virtual Machine GC team. So, I'm standing here chained to the desk and two somewhat awkward thoughts cross my mind. First, this one. And second, uh, we've been hearing a lot of great talks today about the future of Java, what has been done in Java, how to use Java, how to improve it, and now you get a talk that's about the guts within the VM. And uh, while I try to tone it down a bit, uh, it's going to be a bit technical. Well, hey. bad luck. <laughs> anyway, I've brought with me uh, five improvements we've been working on since GDK9 and a call for particip participation because uh, we think that the GVM lives and dies by your input and I'm going to uh, yeah, tell you what you can do. But start, let's start. So first, parallel full GC. So there's always been the problem that the G1 full GC is very, fl very slow. I mean, it's serial, things read it. Uh, so G1 has very high worst case latencies and really bad throughput. So in this change, we tried to make uh, the G1 parallel full GC on par with the parallel GC full GC. And the solution was basically, yeah, make it parallel. And here's one slide about some results with that. So uh, basically, we are comparing uh, G1 parallel full GC with uh, parallel GC full GC on a few applications that I found uh, rummaging on the back track uh, uh, on, the, hot, on the, the mailing lists. And uh, they should kind of represent uh, applications with different uh, liveness, different connectivity. And uh, yeah, there's the system GC test that performs many system GCs on a very small life set. This big RAM tester uh, application or micro benchmark basically, that's basically a big LRU cache, it means a big array and you add uh, area of references and you add uh, and remove uh, objects in an LRU fashion. Uh, that has at the point of full GC a huge life set uh, and lots of references, and there's this tree fragger or fragger that's a fragmentation inducing benchmark from Red Hat with a medium life set. And without going into the detail, uh, yeah, it looks we are there. Do you know how many cores this tracks? Uh, I think uh, 32 or something like this, yeah. Uh, okay. For everything fine. This is available since JDK 10 built 33. Then uh, let's go to the next topic. Sorry, has there been a question? Okay. Faster card scanning. Now you will, uh, will likely ask yourself, what's card scanning? What's card scanning? So uh, let me explain that a bit. In this figure, you can see the shower heap, the split in regions, the, the blue boxes. It contains uh, objects, so there's references between each other. And you GC, we are going to move that one object. Now we have a problem. What we are going to do with these references? I mean, if we just continue uh, the application, it would uh, very likely crash at some point when dereferencing that. So there is something called remember sense uh, that, as the name implies, remembers the locations where there are references from other regions to a particular region. But uh, what does it, ha and that using that, we can fix up these references and the application is ready to go. But what does it, that have to do with cards and scanning? Well, the elements of the remember set are not the actual references to the references uh, to the Java objects, but uh, to so-called cards, that means small subdivisions of uh, the memory. And to actually find the references, you need to scan that area. And you need to uh, scan this area quickly. So the solution for this change was to refactor and improve the current existing scanning code. That means uh, the code has been really, really overly generic. 
It has been replaced by uh, speci specialized code for different situations. This allows us to manually subsume and remove lots of checks in the code. And uh, just showing you results, this is, uh, uh, the, these, are, is, these are the pause times of this big RAM test application, which incidentally also has lots, of, spends tons of time on this uh, scan, card scanning phase uh, before the change, and yeah, that's the pause times afterwards. Uh, nice thing about this, also available in JDK 10. Now let's get to what we have been working on lately, and that's not in JDK 10. First one is uh, what we call rebuilding the remembered sets concurrently. So there's a problem with G1, and that's uh, the remembered set. <laughs> they take a lot of memory. We've known instances where 20% uh, of the total heap uh, size is taken just by the remembered set. Like if you have a 100 gig heap, uh, the remembered set takes 20 gigs, which is bad. Uh, the upper bounds are actually even higher because this is an O square of the regions uh, relation. And uh, yeah, what has been noticed is the old regions use the most remembered set memory, and I'm going to try to show you why by showing you uh, how the remembered set and the uh, objects within a region change within the GC cycle that is shown uh, above that heap snippet. So. At the beginning of the collection cycle, there are a few young only, um, so called young only GCs, and during that time, new remember set entries are added to the uh, remember set of the region. And at some point, G1 decides to start marking. The heap got full enough, and so it uh, starts looking at which region it can uh, evacuate. Okay, now uh, lightness analyzes that this marking is working. During the time, more, the application uh, continues working, more young only GCs happening. And uh, at some point, there's this so called remark pause. At the time, the liveness uh, of, the, of the, the object within the region has been determined. Uh, but at that moment, actually, G1 could immediately start evacuating the that region that moving the, the remaining life contacts uh, somewhere else. The problem is the remembered set. It's pretty big, as you might have uh, noticed at this point. So it tries to uh, kind of remove obsolete entries. That means entries that uh, cards that do not contain any life objects. For this uh, uh, to happen, it needs to do another concurrent phase that's called create life data map since GDK9 where it uh, creates that map that is then used to scrub the remembered sets uh, from those obsolete entries. And during that time, the application continues working, adds remembered set entries to the, uh, to the remembered set, of course. And at some point, there's this so-called cleanup pause where uh, first we know the liveness of the objects in that region and we hopefully got rid of a lot of uh, remembered set entries. That means cards to scan during the GC to evacuate that region. Unfortunately, uh, for some reasons, we can't do uh, the so-called mixed GC uh, immediately. We need to uh, wait for another young only GC. But uh, then finally, uh, we can do that. There are two cases now. One is that region gets evacuated, and that's a nice one to remember that it gets completely dropped on the floor, and that region is empty, can be reused. But what happens if that region is uh, <clears throat> not cleaned up, and the uh, G1 decides to not uh, evacuate that region, and that for multiple of those uh, garbage collection cycles? Well, uh, the remember that gets bigger and bigger uh, while it always uh, removes actual entries from and there's some fragmentation in the memory uh, there. And that's why it gets really big. Some key observations. Uh, G1 maintains the remember set all the time for all regions. I mean, if you think about it, and uh, after seeing this uh, animation, uh, you will notice that uh, G1 actually needs this remember set, at least for old regions, only, for, uh, only during this mixture season, all the other time it doesn't need it. 
uh, and uh, the other issue is that removing those obsolete remembered set entries is costly. I mean, you need to create this live data map. Uh, during the cleanup pause, you need to uh, scrub what we call the, uh, the remembered set, which takes, it can take a few hundred milliseconds, actually, which you don't want. So the solution here is uh, only keep the required remembered sets when really needed. That means only, uh, only for regions that are in the so-called collection set. That means regions that we are probably going to collect uh, in the future, which is uh, much less than all regions. And of course, that minimizes the fragmentation in the remembered set. Uh, for that to work, we have to construct these remembered set concurrently between remark and cleanup, which is bad, but uh, at least we don't need to do anything in the, uh, in the cleanup pause, which is bad for latency. So uh, there is some prototype, some internal prototype, which length, uh, and there are some side effects. It lengthens the time from remark to cleanup. What we measured was up to 30% longer concurrent marking cycles which we think isn't that much of an issue, particularly because uh, I, I so because uh, the uh, dynamic air hub feature that determines when to start the marking, that means uh, schedules that initial mark pause will automatically adapt anyway. Uh, other nice uh, side effects are it improves throughput and pause times. Throughput because uh, Outside of this rebuild remember set phase, you didn't, don't need to update the remember set at all. And all that work goes away. And uh, you create, and f from a post time point of view, uh, you create, since you create the remember sets only at the time when you need it, there is little fragmentation in it. Actually, you probably noticed that I didn't say anything about yeah, trying to scrub these remember sets anyway. So, and uh, the feature for the container guys, it allows uh, G1 to implement a bounded remembered set in terms of memory usage. That means uh, uh, when rebuilding, G1 could just stop collecting remembered sets for particular reasons if some budget has been exhausted, which has always been a problem. I mean, uh, yeah, 20% of the heap is probably too much uh, if you make that kind of... Uh, uh, safety buffer. So some numbers on that. Uh, memory usage on that big RAM tester application. In the baseline, uh, the remembered set takes 10% of maximum heap size, which isn't too bad. And, but in the prototype, outside of the rebuilding and the mixture C phase, uh, the remembered set only takes 0.5% of the total heap anymore. Uh, at the end of rebuilding, though, you still need 7.5% of uh, the total heap size when rebuilding the remember set for around 60% of the heap. This is due to various reasons. There are some constant costs there. Uh, uh, and, and G1, if the, if the remember set doesn't contain too many entries, it uses a less dense representation of the remember set. And... Uh, uh, this uh, selection policy for the regions to rebuild the remember set for is pretty simple at the moment. So how does this look like from a post time point of view? This is the same graph as before from the faster uh, card scanning uh, change. And this is what it looks like now after that change. Uh, yeah. More information can be found on this uh, backtrack entry. It's a work in progress. It may or may not land in GDK 11. Now, for the next uh, change, we're currently working on a portable mix, portable mix collections. So uh, G1 strives to keep some kind of pause time. And it does that by uh, determining the collection set. That means the number of regions it's going to collect at the start of the garbage collection and then just does that everything in one go uh, without caring about the, uh, egg, uh, about the current time while doing so. The problem is particularly doing mixed collections, predictions are pretty hard to do. Uh, and G1, unfortunately, mispredicts pretty often. Uh, I mean, you can tune uh, the mixed collections 
uh, to keep the pause times, but it's pretty hard. Let me show you how this looks like. So you have this heap with some young regions, some old regions, and some free regions. And uh, there is this uh, collection set, if you want, uh, which contains these young regions and these four uh, old regions at the bottom. And currently, uh, during a garbage collection, uh, G1 just takes all those regions, copies them, all, and copies the contents over either into new young regions or old regions. And yeah, maybe it can happen that the pause time is exceeded. Bad luck. So this solution that we uh, follow here is to incrementally uh, collect the, uh, the collection set and abort the evacuation if the next increment would take too long. It's easier to, uh, to predict uh, small, uh, the evacuation time for smaller parts of the heap than uh, for larger. So how do, would that look like? The same collection set, is, and uh, G1 starts by collecting the young regions. Uh, that takes some part of the pause time budget. Uh, now G1 sees that there is quite a bit uh, of budget left, so it takes two old generations, while well, still quite a bit of pause time left, uh, but not as much as before, so it just evacuates one old regions. Now we are go getting really close to uh, pause time goal, and uh, G1 simply uh, says, yeah, stop the garbage collection, we are probably going to uh, exceed the pause time now. Uh, yeah. So uh, there is some performance impact of that abortable mode. Uh, so the idea is to only enter this abortable mode if uh, needed to decrease that uh, overhead. More information uh, can be found at the uh, bug tracker entries. Again, work in progress. Uh, it may or may not land in GDK 11. And uh, on for the last of the changes I want to discuss today, and that's automatic thread sizing. So uh, one problem of uh, G1 and basically all of the collectors is that manually setting the number of threads correctly is impossible, and in many cases not even desired. I mean, for, if you want to run your installer, your tiny installer on a machine with 2,000 threads, you don't want that installer to launch, uh, well, 1,500 threads. Uh, that doesn't make a, uh, really sense. Anyway, if you wanted to try uh, to set this right number, it's uh, a lot of work because uh, it depends on the hardware, on the application, and actually it depends on the current application phase you are in. And uh, to make matters even wor worse, in the hotspot JVM, you can only set the number of threads statically at the start of your application of the JVM. So basically, you can't do that. But uh, there are certain benefits on using the right number of threads for uh, the correct situation because it saves resources, threads, memory. Uh, it has some faster startup, and actually, uh, it uh, improves pause time. Uh, and our solution that we are going to uh, implement here is to let G1 automatically decide this number of threads because, uh, I mean, G1 already takes a lot of statistics about GCs, how long it takes to uh, copy a certain amount of objects, how interconnected they are, and such things. So it seems obvious to let the garbage collector decide that. And actually, uh, G, uh, G1 is cheating a bit since CDK9, some phases of the garbage collection actually do exactly that for performance reasons. Uh, I brought some graph of some random application here, uh, which at the beginning has uh, some higher, uh, some longer pauses because it starts up, uh, moves stuff, uh, initializing in some kind of database, if you want to say so. But after that, there's not much activity going on. If you look at the right side of the graph, it shows the number of threads uh, used during the evacuation phase. The light blue line, which uh, basically shows the current state uh, of the VM, we always use 28 threads, whatever the situation is. But uh, in our prototype, 
basically, at the start, when there's lots of activity, uh, G1 will ramp up the number of threads to use uh, really aggressively, but then drops uh, them down to three in that case. And uh, looking back at the uh, left graph again, which shows pause times, well, actually, it improves pause times a little, which is nice, but yeah, we'll take it. More information can be found in this JEP, uh, draft JEP, or uh, in that uh, bug track guide. Again, that's a work in progress uh, and will land in some release uh, in the future. So let's get to the last uh, topic I have here, participate. Uh, we would like to uh, have you participate because uh, well, it helps us a lot to improve uh, G1 and also the other collectors because we want to know what is the right thing to improve. I mean, I, I mentioned and used this BigRAM test application. Uh, that's an application that has been attached by some user uh, after, uh, after noticing that, that his application doesn't work at all. And yeah, we will... At, uh, we will look at this stuff and uh, fix it. Uh, we know that not everybody can uh, contribute on the same level, but there is a lot of things you can do. Uh, probably the easiest thing and the least time consuming is hanging out on the hotspot GCUs uh, mailing list. Report your, your, your failures, report your successes, which is also pretty nice, uh, and provide answers to the community. If you think you want to uh, start with development, fixing small bugs, in the bug track, uh, at least in the GC team, we label all our, our bugs that are simple with uh, some uh, labels called start or clean up. Uh, browse through it, look through it, and uh, yeah, come to Hotspot GC Dev and uh, discuss them. Even if you don't have a fix, we will happy to help. But I also, uh, <clears throat> brought some interesting larger projects for the pros of you to do, and which would be nice for G1, of course. Uh, and they are called MF Barriers, Throughput Barriers, and Numa Support for G1. Uh, just uh, a few quick notes about each of them. MF Barriers. So there's a functionality in uh, the compiler uh, that's called MF Barriers. And that's basically some small piece of code that is run before an, a method, an M method is entered. And that could be used to improve uh, the throughput of uh, the G1 collector. In particular, uh, G1 uses so-called write barriers for every reference write. And uh, that write barrier, or part of that write barrier, isn't used all the time. Actually, it's used uh, only during the very, very small marking part of the garbage collection cycle you saw before. And uh, although, uh, but, but at the moment it's in all the time, it's active all the time, there it needs to be some code executed for that and that, uh, as I have learned yesterday, uh, could give up to 3% of throughput. Uh, so what some uh, end method barrier could do is uh, during the time when it's needed, uh, re remove that so-called uh, pre-barrier and exchange it by NOPs. That means no operations and the, basically every CPU can uh, do nothing pretty fast. Uh, throughput barriers. So G1 has throughput deficiencies. Uh, everyone knows them. Uh, mostly write barrier related and this time so-called post write barrier related. And there is a possibility actually to be as fast during application time, or almost as fast as parallel GC. And that would be by actually using the same barrier as parallel GC in G1 uh, at the cost of some little extra work during the pause, which may or may not actually have an impact. More information about this, my colleague uh, Eric uh, Duerblad uh, had a really, really good talk about this last foster. And now let's get to the last item I have brought with me, and that's NUMA support. Uh, yeah, 
it would be really, really great if uh, we could improve uh, throughput on large multi-socket machines by exploiting memory locality in G1. There is a lot of opportunity to get really, really good numbers. There's the JEP uh, that is actually open for six years now. Maybe some, somebody wants to have a try. And that's it for me already. Questions?